Hello, I'm Spencer Kramer from TCM Films, and this is Masking and Hit Film and Creative Ways to Use It. Intro. First off, I will start with the basics. Masks are just essentially cutting out specific parts of the layer. This can be used in many ways, such as if one of the members of your crew is an idiot with a mic in frame. First, select the layer that you want to mask around. Then go to this icon. Then just click a shape around the area you want to mask around. Now that I have that I want, I can move it accordingly, or by inverting the mask, I can simply remove the singled out layer entirely. Two, one, go. So say I want to have this lightsaber fly through the air. I just have to have a shot of the background that I want, and then a picture of a toy lightsaber. Then I can just mask around the toy lightsaber, turn on keyframes for position of the toy lightsaber layer, and then use them to animate the lightsaber moving across the screen. The last step is to turn on motion blur, and we have a convincing shot. And the possibilities with these techniques are endless. You can use them for throwing knives, breaking things that you don't want broken, and I use this numerous times in the latest TCM short set to release in 2017. In this shot, our protagonist is hitting his, one of his enemies with a really big stick. But wait, that is actually a small stick. I shot my actor with half a stick and then took a picture of the stick and then keyframed it to follow the actor's arc. King 2 again. So much King 2. The big problem that I had with this is the render time. It took much longer than it needed to because I added motion blur before animating. Because big tip here, motion blur takes forever to render. Adding motion blur should be the last step in any effect. But we'll probably do a whole episode on min minimalizing render time in the near future. Getting back on topic, I used this in another film that was released on a different channel called Bohemian Batman 1. So for this shot from our short, The Speeding Thief, Charlie Hero is supposed to jump really, really high and then land in front of the camera. For a shot like this, getting a clean plate is a must-have. But of course, I forgot to get one. Thumbs up. Thought I might be able to piece together one with the footage that I had. So I got my footage and duplicated it three times. Naming them appropriately is extremely helpful later on. Then I got the middle layer and found the frame where Charlie was the highest in his jump and mask around the bottom half. Then I selected the bottom layer, found the frame where he finished his jump when he was the lowest in the clip and mask around the top again making sure to not get him in the shot for either middle or bottom part. Now, I freeze framed him. I freeze framed both the middle and the bottom clip by decreasing the, the clip to one frame and then grabbing the rate stretch tool and increasing it to the whole length of the composite shot. Genius. Actually, I looked that up online. So now I have a clean plate. So now, I got the top clip and duplicated it again and trimmed it to in just trimmed the top layer again to in just before Charlie stopped his jump. Then I got the other layer and I trimmed it to one frame again using the HS tool to make it longer. And then I got mask around Charlie in that layer and then I keyframed him to move up and out of frame and then back down and then I did all that. I don't know. It's just the same idea. And then I added my fire stock footage, turn on motion blur, and then I had my finished shot. Pokemon Go! Oh. Another thing to note is the color correction. I admit I am not totally sure what to call it, but it's color correcting the colors, so I call it color correction. But what I mean by color correction is making both the layers of the clean plate have the same brightness, saturation, and so on. This was filmed outside, so even in the small time difference between these shots, I still had to do at least some color correction. So whether you're inside or outside, it's always, always, at least necessary to try to make them the same. Okay, so I admit I was extremely lucky to find a clean plate for this shot. And, but, and often you won't be able to find a full background. But your shots won't always need one. For something like a wire removal, which is still on process, you can pull it off without a full background. <laughs> so what is likely the most common use of masking is to make it look like a visual effect shot is behind something. So for this shot, I had an idiot firing a gun. I have a front muzzle flare here, 
but when I move it over the gun, you can see that it is on top of the barrel rather than behind it. So move the muzzle flare where it would be if it was behind the gun, and then duplicate your footage layer, moving one above the muzzle flare. Just now just mask around the gun on your top footage layer. Once you close the mask, you can see that the muzzle flare appears to be behind the barrel. And this technique is used all the time. I purposely picked a muzzle flare because this specific one only lasts one frame. But if your fake lasts longer than one frame, then it's called rotoscoping. I use this in The Speeding Thief as well. It's where you use this technique, but instead of just trimming your duplicate layer to last one frame, you open the mask controls and turn on keyframe for the path of the mask. Then go through your footage frame by frame, adjusting the mask accordingly. This can take hours and is the bane of all VFX artists. You can use tracking for some situations, but we'll get more into that in a future episode. But the middle... Ugh, I can't do this. I'm so stupid. As you can see, masking is an essential tool for all VFX artists. Some more tutorials will be put on this channel that use masking, and really almost all the effects I do use at least some form of masking. Okay, so thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you didn't enjoy this video, then leave an angry comment. And then like and subscribe. Finish my video, my video. Hopefully, I actually recorded it this time. It's recording. I'm singing for some random reason.